All right, I am here again with Pastor Dan. Hey, everybody. Uh, We are so excited, Pastor Dan. Awesome, awesome word for this part number five of our grace message, closing it out. Um, It's it's just been such an awesome message. And there were some awesome things that came out of this last week's message. Uh, And I I just want to bring it up. You had mentioned how we are called um, to rule and reign. And that was just really a, a, a fresh perspective and really exciting because uh, because we're called to rule, rule and reign, we are also graced to do it with gifts and abilities that will allow us to do that. Um, and I, it just, again, a fresh perspective on, wow, I get to be a part of what God has called me to do. And it's not to just kind of get beat up by the world, you know, to rule and reign on this earth and, and shine a light. That's a really cool thing. And then be a steward of the grace that he's given us. Yeah, actually, it's when you, when you look at really what it is, it's a game changer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You know, um, I, I share that same excitement because if we get a hold of what grace really is about positionally and then in practice, it, it can change our lives. Literally, we're, we're not called to sit idly by and just float down the lazy river of life, which many Christians are doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I know there's times in my life where I have allowed circumstances, I've allowed uh, finances, I've allowed um, people's personalities or um, different things in the world to govern my attitudes, my actions. Uh, where I'm going, what I'm doing, this is just what I have to do, this is what I have to put up with, or, you know, we could spiritualize it and say it's my cross to bear, right? Uh, right. you know, which, <laughs> which obviously there are certain things that God wants us to go through, but at the same time, if we're called to rule and reign, uh, it's a game changer. It changes yeah. the way that we live. It changes what we put up with, changes uh, how we parent, changes how we do work on the job. It changes how we do relationships because now we're not just going to sit idly by and whatever happens, happens. No, we're called to rule and reign. We're called to change the scene like Jesus and the apostles did, turning the world upside down. Yeah. Well, and and going in that vein again, as sitting idly by, you had made mention uh, that we're not to do that as as Christians and uh, to just, we see challenges around us. We see things going on around us. Uh, What can we do or what are some of the things that we can or should do even? Well, I think, um, you know, uh, let's, let's get a real world situation here. Um, if we're called to rule and reign in life, what happens when there's a natural disaster mm-hmm. and we feel helpless? Mm-hmm. Oh, wait a second. I thought we were supposed to rule and reign and now a tidal wave just covered Thailand or mm-hmm. an earthquake just rocked Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the levees broke in New Orleans mm-hmm. uh, after yeah. Hurricane Katrina and people are sitting on the roof of their house. Yeah. What can I do? Yeah. Um, am I supposed to go... <laughs> To Louisiana, am I supposed to fly to Japan? Am yeah. I, you know, what am I supposed to do? And we, we feel helpless because yeah. uh, really we know we can only do so much in the natural. I think that's where grace comes in and empowers us to, to go beyond our own ability. Yeah. Uh, we underestimate the value and the power behind our prayers. Oh, yeah. Really, um, you know, God has given us a tool to roll and reign in life. Mm-hmm. And in our prayer times, we can literally change the course of nature. We can change the events on the earth. Uh, We can uh, govern what takes place in the political scene, the economic scene. Um, You know, we've seen this in our prayer times. We've seen this where we've been praying for nations, and then uh, we've seen headlines in the newspapers that confirmed that our prayers had been working. You know, um, uh, I remember one time when we were in Bible college, we we were in a, a Bible college in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, Tulsa has hurricane, uh, I'm sorry, tornadoes. Yeah. And that's a scary thing for a California boy. You know, I'll, I'll take an earthquake <laughs> yeah. in the middle of the night that wakes me up and knocks a pitcher off the shelf yeah. any day. Uh, you know, California may have mudslides and fires and all yeah. that kind of stuff, but we do not have a season called yeah. tornado. You know, so um, really, uh, for this California boy and, and my wife and, and brother-in-law was there and, and some of the other pastors on staff and, and friends uh, from California, we were all there. And the last night <laughs> that we were there, ready to go drive the long drive home the next day with our, uh, our the truck. The day back. before you were This is home. the day before we're leaving, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're there huddled in, uh, actually it's Pastor Luke's duplex, <laughs> and he's there with Pastor Joe and and, uh, and his other roommate James, and we're all huddled in there. We're saying goodbye to some of our, our friends from work, uh-huh. and uh, you know, we're just having a special time of prayer together. Some yeah. tears were shed, yeah. and we and, and we're outside. It's so funny. They had a trampoline. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if they bought it or brought it or what they did, but they had a trampoline at their duplex, and um, so we're all sitting in a circle Indian style on this trampoline and this I, I mean again I'm from California never yeah. seen this happen before yeah. the sky turns green <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, now that's that's like that. Mo- I haven't yeah. seen the movie because yeah. these kind of movies drive me crazy. Yeah. But that's like Twister, right? right. Yeah, yeah. For anybody who's seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. The sky turns green and it's weird. The birds stop chirping. Um, oh, everything my. goes still. It's oh, just sh- the strangest feeling. Now, uh, some of our our coworkers um, that had they grown did, up, yeah. they knew exactly what was going on, and they're like, "Get in the house, get in the bathtub, put a mattress over your head, and oh, hold my. on for dear life, and pray to God that you survive." You know. Oh my. And and here's here's a bunch of <laughs> Bible college students who had learned about our authority in Jesus. <laughs> and so we're watching the news report and we just go to prayer. Yeah. And we start praying. Now, as we're praying, the news report is telling us that the tornado is going to intersect and they said the names of the streets it was going to mm-hmm. intersect at. Oh my. Can you guess <laughs> what cross streets <laughs> right, right, they were right going? It was at. right where the <laughs> duplex was, right? So we've got a tornado headed yeah. right where we're at. Now, as we're praying, we huddled around. We're in a circle now. We're no longer on the trampoline. We're in the living room. We're praying around the TV. And as we're praying, mm-hmm. rebuking the storm, speaking to the the right. uh, the, the tornado yeah. that it will not hit Tulsa, right. it, will, it will stop, it will go around, we hear the news reporter say, oh, my goodness, the tornado just got caught in the river. It's going to go down underneath the city, and it's going to go out and not do any damage. Wow. It'll probably just dissipate as it wow. goes down the river. Wow. See, we underestimate our yeah. prayers. Yeah. Uh, you know, I couldn't, if I wanted to go and talk to, uh, let, let's say I wanted to talk to the president. Right. It doesn't matter who's in office, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, whoever's there. If I wanted to go and change their mind about something in the natural, mm-hmm. I could call, mm-hmm. try and get through, but I don't think I'd get very far. Right. Right. I could write a letter and someone would read that letter and say, oh, that's yeah. a great <laughs> idea and file it under T for yeah. trash, right? <laughs> Uh, I, I could go down to Washington, D.C., Pennsylvania Avenue, yeah. and I could knock on the gates and right. try and get in. Uh, yeah. But I think Secret Service might right. stop me. Yeah, that would uh, get you know, especially far. if I maybe I could book a tour and see yeah. if I could sneak off. But again, I think I'd get stopped somewhere right. along the way. I could only get so far in the natural. I, but, but with grace empowered prayers, yeah. if I'm praying, then the Spirit of God can get a hold of whoever's in that Oval Office and can start to reveal things and start to move on their heart. And the Bible says that the king's heart is like a water course that it, that's in the hand of the Lord. He directs it wherever he desires. Right. My prayers can move the heart and the hand of God. Right. And God can then move on the earth. Mm-hmm. You know, I may not be able to uh, go send relief aid to yeah. Louisiana or to Japan. Right. But if I can pray and ask God to move those resources, mm-hmm. I can move the hand of God. Yeah. Wow, that's grace. That's that's where grace empowers my prayers. It empowers my abilities. And then, if God calls me to do something in the natural, yeah. then I know that I can go in the power of God. And, and, and so we can do that at, at our work sites if we're having trouble with, with coworkers, even supervisors and bosses. Yeah, right. Where we can't, maybe we can't talk to them directly, but our prayers can go ahead of us and do that work, right? Absolutely. Well, how about marriage? Right. You know, it's yeah. A lot of times I've heard people say, I can't change him or I can't yeah. Yeah. Uh, make great. her do this. Mm-hmm. No, but if you pray for them, right. God can get a hold of their heart and can start to work in that situation, softening them, bringing love and forgiveness, uh, breaking down barriers mm-hmm. and walls that were built up, pulling up roots of bitterness that had been compounded over years. Yeah. Only God can get a hold of a heart That's and good. change that heart. That's so right. if a husband and wife are at odds and they just can't do things in the natural. They can't reason. They can't talk it through. Counseling doesn't work. Start to pray. I yeah. mean, that, that should be our first response yeah. and it should be our last response. It Amen. should be all the way through. <laughs> and then in the natural, yeah, you do what you can do, but if grace empowers it, that's where the breakthrough comes. Well, you keep using the term grace empowered uh, and, and you, you had an awesome statement that you made that grace doesn't replace wisdom. In fact, grace empowers wisdom wisdom. How so? Or uh, Can you give us some examples? Other, other, I mean, you've already have, but explain that more in depth in terms of grace empowers wisdom. Well, you know, I, I think uh, I, I used the example and made a statement that there are there would be people who would side on the, on the side of grace and people would side on the side of wisdom. In other words, they would say that they're opposing. Um, someone would say, well, the grace of God is just going to cover this, and they would go and try and do something mm-hmm. and end up in ruin because they had no wisdom. Yeah. Uh, then there are the people who would say that I'm just going to go do this with wisdom because wisdom is proven, wisdom is trusted, uh, wisdom works, and they would only get so far because without the grace, mm-hmm. they would not have the empowerment to do what they were going to do. 
So uh, uh, maybe let's say you use the example of building a business. Somebody says, I'm going to go build a business by grace. And they get out there and they don't have any sound business principles. There's no wisdom yeah. behind it. There's yeah. no uh, the diligent hand shall rule from the word of God. There's no uh, know the state of your flocks from yeah. the word of God and, and sound accounting principles and knowing what's going on. Mm-hmm. There's none of that. They just say, I'm going to go out, I'm going to sell, or I'm going to do this business. And I'm going to be the greatest because God empowers me with grace. Right. But there's no wisdom. You're going to fail. Yeah. You, you have to have the wisdom. But then if somebody says, well, I'm going to build my business solely on wisdom, you can build a great business based mm-hmm. on sound business principles. Yeah. You can know the state of your flocks. You can have the accounting. Uh, you can, can be diligent, and you can build a great business. And we've seen people get super successful. Right. Uh, you know, We all know the, the garage stories of, of Bill Gates yeah. and Apple, and, yeah. and everybody loves the story of Steve Jobs mm-hmm. and these guys that everybody looks up to, that they hustled, they did what they could do, they had the sound business principles and they made a great business. That's fine. But when you talk about true significance, if you're going to build a business that leaves an impact, that actually does something, then you take the wisdom from the Word of God and you take the grace that empowers that business and you may not have success as the world sees. You may not be the business that makes tons of profit. But if your business is empowered by grace, then where you couldn't build a great business, God comes in and builds a great business with significance with purpose. Maybe that business is pouring into kingdom things. Maybe that business is digging the wells for clean water all over the world or uh, is promoting uh, church plants and funding the gospel. Uh, Maybe it's sending missionaries all over the world or or getting Bibles into closed nations. You know, that would be a grace-empowered business that God gets behind. And even though there may be struggles along the way, you've got the wisdom along with the grace that makes it happen when you couldn't. That's good. And, And that really takes us back up to the topic or the theme of the message, which was grace for stewardship, right? Yes. So this, we've been given, we've been empowered, uh, we can use the wisdom, and now it's our responsibility to steward those gifts for the building of God's kingdom. Well, back to the concept of ruling and reigning in life. We can either rule and reign or we can be ruled. Yeah. Right? right. Uh, you know, when, and we talk about some things that can rule us. Sin right. can yeah. rule us. Yeah. We are called by grace to overcome and mm-hmm. be empowered to overcome sin. I know there have been things that uh, when I got saved, I got immediately delivered. There was a special grace for me. Uh, you know, when I got saved, my mouth cleaned up. At 15 right. years old in, in a secular environment, mm-hmm. that was a miracle for a 15-year-old right. right. to have right. clean language. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> but there were other things that I struggled with prior I struggle right. with lust. I struggle, right. you know, as a young man, those are the issues that you deal with, and, and you have to struggle through those. And as a Christian, I often thought, God, what's wrong? What am I? Why didn't you deliver me from these things? Where's the grace? Yeah. Uh, but I, I had to have wisdom and grace combined together to rule over those things. I had to clean up my act on my own part, and then allow the grace of God to change my heart change my desires, uh, you know, to, to, to point out, hey, you're being prideful, knock it off, yeah. and listen to the spirit of grace, mm-hmm. and, and as well allow God to change my desires to where, you know, my desire uh, would be for purity, would be right. for the things of God, to where I, I can rule and reign over those areas that would, would, would try and rule over me. Mm-hmm. Same thing with circumstance. We can allow circumstance to rule our life. There are many people who want to do something for Jesus, but because of their circumstance, I can't tell you how many people I've heard say, I can't do something because of my uh, physical limitation or my mental limitation. Um, you know, but I mean, come on. Our founding pastor had no degrees. Yeah. He had a fifth grade reading level. Mm-hmm. The only reason why he made it through high school was because of his baseball abilities. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, he got started in business, and that was pulled out from underneath mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. But he had a call of God on his life, yeah. and he had the grace of God on his life. And here's a man who married a broken woman, mm-hmm. and these two broken people got right. together Amen. and just believed God. Yeah. And by the empowerment of grace, even with their mental limitations, yeah. You know, yeah. uh, there was no doctorate degree. There was right. no um, leadership training. There was no world-renowned thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, even his baseball skills, he, he played baseball for a couple of years as a young man, but, yeah. but never really made it to the majors, never really had that platform. Yeah. All it was was the grace of God. Mm-hmm. And even with all those limitations, they were able to build, uh, you know, one of the greatest churches on the planet. Yeah. And, uh, and, and with tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands getting saved and walking through our aisles. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, even our food distribution, you think about Pastor Deborah starting that, you know, uh, we give away last year seven million pounds of food. Right. She never would have thought that. I mean, no, no. Yeah. And if God would have spoke that to her, hey, you're going to give away seven million pounds of food, food she yeah. probably would have passed out, you know, at, at that point. Yeah. But all she had was, you know what? We can buy some beans and rice. Right. 
go door to door and tell someone about Jesus. We can go offer the love mm-hmm. of Jesus Christ, ask them what they need prayer for. Mm-hmm. Then the grace of God hit that. Yeah. And it's grown to what it is today. And that's that perfect example of the practical thing I can do when I see a need. Right. Right. Absolutely. Feed somebody. One person at a time, one door at a time. Yeah, I, I think Mother Teresa said something to the effect of, and, and someone will fact check me and, and get the right quote, <laughs> but uh, she said something to the effect of you can't do everything for everyone, but you can do something for someone, like yeah. an individual. You, yeah. can, you can love one person at a yeah. time. Right, absolutely. Uh, you know, you can't do it all, yeah. but what you can do is, is the one person that's right there in front of you. Yeah, that's good. That's good, Pastor Dan. I, as we wrap up, and it's been an awesome series, are there any last thoughts that you would like to just share or impart? I, I think, yes. Uh, you know, where we ended with part five with growing in grace. I would encourage all of our listeners to grow in grace. Grow, yeah. grow in grace through faith. This is a faith walk. You're not going to know all the answers. You're not going to be able to calculate everything out in the natural. Right. What you can do with the wisdom that you have and the wisdom that's in God's word, God will empower with his grace. Many times the things God asks us to do are outside of the realm of our understanding or our mm-hmm. ability. Uh, you know, public speaking is like the number one fear. I think Pastor Luke hit this on, on his message about grace for service. Yeah. But it takes faith to step out and tell someone about Jesus. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes our awkward, uh, you know, unclear, muddied thinking and, and muttering expression of the gospel, we think in the natural, how could that ever go into someone's heart yeah. and bring them to a place where they would want to get saved. Mm-hmm. But it's many times those stories of somebody that just stepped out and said something, Jesus loves you, come to church. Yeah. Those, those become the miraculous, mm-hmm. life-changing events that God uses and empowers by His grace. And it takes faith on our part to listen to the voice of the Lord, hear the Word of God, and then go and act on it. We've got to grow in our knowledge base. You know, wisdom is knowledge applied. It's Wisdom is, is what we, the, the, the practical application of our knowledge. We've got to grow in the knowledge of God. As we do, we will grow in the grace of God mm-hmm. because the more we know, the more we grow. We've got to grow in humility. We need to be dependent on God. This is not a man-empowered thing. This is a God-empowered thing. And if we can just cling to God, cling to the Holy Spirit, cling to the scriptures and to the word of God. As we humble ourselves, God will exalt us. God will lift us up. And then finally, our bold prayers. We talked That's about right. the power of prayer. Right. Don't underestimate the power of That's your good. prayers. Don't neglect your prayers. Don't neglect, even though it may be routine, maybe you wrote it down and you thought, well, that's not from the heart. But listen, if you can take a prayer out of the word of God, if you can take a prayer that you really desire and you can lift that up before the Lord and remind him, you know, there was an unjust judge in the Bible that wouldn't give a widow justice, but Mm -hmm. she pestered him. We need to learn the lesson and we need to go after God and we need to bring these things up as we do. The Bible says God is not unjust. Mm -hmm. God doesn't forget us. God hasn't left us alone. God wants to act on our behalf, but we have to act in partnership with the Holy Spirit. I'd like to leave everybody with that and, uh, you know, encourage you guys to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, again, thank you, Pastor Dan. And even though this me- this series is over, we look forward to uh, continuing with this uh, print uh, this idea of the podcast and kind of helping people through some of the messages that come out. Not that they need clarity as much as uh, helping us kind of go deeper into the thought of what we can do in the allotted time on on this on this platform and really just delve in and, and put it into our spirits. For sure, you know what I think we'll do. Antonio, is uh, we'll just find out which sermon or which series starts uh, confusing everybody and yeah. <laughs> uh, frustrates people. Yeah. And maybe we'll start talking about that. That's good. Uh, you know, we'll just select a message during the week, um, maybe in the future until we get to another series and then we can focus on that. But if you do have questions out there, you're listening to this podcast and, and you have additional questions about Grace or about any of the messages at the Rock Church World Outreach Center, I would encourage you to email us, send in those questions to email at rockchurch.com or hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, put in your comments that this is a question for the podcast, and we'll be looking over those things, and we will do our best to answer those in our next podcast. God bless you guys.